Hi, we're hoping to provide you with a basic overview of safety and handling for Proxima HPR resins. First, we're going to mold a small nut-shaped part using a low-cost, low-pressure injection machine. And then we're going to cast a simple cylinder by hand. Before we get started, I want to review some basic safety. In general, we try to ensure good standards of industrial hygiene and utilize basic PPE. Proxima HPR resins have a strong odor that can be detected at concentrations as low as 5 parts per billion. The time-weighted average permissible exposure limit in the United States is 0.5 parts per million, which is 100 times greater than the odor threshold, which means the smell of resin does not indicate an unsafe level in the air. That being said, proper engineering controls and PPE should be used to ensure a safe and comfortable working environment. Proxima HPR resins are categorized as GHS flammable liquids. Their flash points are above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which allows them to be treated as combustible liquids in certain industries and applications. As a comparison, acetone's flash point is less than zero degrees Fahrenheit. Please review the SDS for all components for more information. We're gonna be using Proxima HPR 2102 resin and CT762 catalyst today to mold a net shaped part. We'll be using a MVP injection machine designed for Proxima and a mold designed by Castec. Here, we're transferring resin into a day tank. You can pull directly from the drum, but a day tank has a few features that I wanna highlight. First, it's vacuum rated, so we have the option to degas. Second, it's jacketed, so we have additional temperature control. And third, it has an agitator, which allows us to mix in fillers and pigments. You can also see that we're using a snorkel and an inline filter on the day tank to control vapors. Both have activated charcoal filters, which help absorb any of the odor. We're going to pull vacuum on the day tank today to degas the resin. One quick note is we're using an inline air filter to keep any VOCs out of the vacuum pump. The catalyst component is a suspension that can settle over time. We shake it before pouring and have a low speed agitator on the day tank to help keep it in suspension. We're gonna fill the day tank with nitrogen. This injection machine was designed by MVP for Proxima. It will meter both components at a 50 to 1 ratio by weight and mix them using a static mixer. So this mold was designed by Castec. It's water heated, which helps increase cycle times and improve surface finish. Today we have the mold heated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Heated molds are necessary on thinner parts to achieve full cure without a post cure. Mold release isn't necessary with HPR resins, but it can be helpful if there are parts that want to stick. Here's the inlet port. This is the outlet vent. The inlet runner follows the parting line to the bottom of the part. This is the overflow reservoir. So here we're recirculating the resin through the system in order to bring freshly degassed resin through the pumps. Now it's time to start the injection. When you're ready to clean up, we recommend the use of toluene or similar solvents. We're using a product called Alkylate 225, which is not flammable and has no odor. We don't recommend using acetone or similar solvents. When you're done for the day, we recommend putting a head of nitrogen on the resin drum and catalyst container and storing the catalyst in the fridge to help shelf life. Using Proxima HPR 2102 resin and CT762 catalyst, we're gonna be molding a stock shaped cylinder, but this time we're gonna be using a hand mix and pour method into an open mold. For this process, we're working inside of a ducted hood. The resin and catalyst have been weighed out. Make sure to add the catalyst slowly and mix until it appears to be well mixed with no visible streaks. While you're stirring, be careful not to whip in too many air voids. The mold we're using here is just a simple cylinder made out of PVC on an aluminum base, and it's just sealed with a basic gasket. At this size, you don't need any additional heat to fully cure. However, a simple heated base will shorten cycle time significantly. Today, the base is heated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. 